Adrian Kinderis, Chief Executive at ARI Registry Services, which helps with these new applications. He joins us from New York City. And uh, Adrian, you're saying, what, a thousand applications uh, should be coming through from now until, say, uh, end of April? Yeah, hi, hi, um, Susan, and, and happy uh, new generic top-level domain name day. Um, it's a big day for all of us in the industry. Look, we'll, I think we'll see, um, I, in, in the sweep in the office, I've got about 1,500 um, applications being submitted to ICANN uh, over the journey. So, um, you know, I think that uh, you're certainly going to see some of the bigger brands stepping forward. You're seeing entrepreneurs that think that there's an opportunity to create a, a .shop or a .golf um, namespace and look to sell names under that. And indeed, governments are coming forward saying that they want to, uh, secure places for their city. So a dot New York or a dot Sydney or a dot Melbourne, for example, uh, could go. So mm. you know, it's, it's really falling into a lot of categories and there's a lot of opportunity for folks out there wanting to exploit it. Yeah, you're saying brands have shown the strongest interest so far with two-thirds of the applications. So we're talking about dot brand, dot Canon, dot Apple, you name it. Yeah, that's right. So, the, you know, for a long time, um, brands have had to deal with uh, nefarious activity online. The policy that underpins .com is, is somewhat open, and, and you know, anybody can register any name under .com. What the new generic top-level domain name program allows is for someone or a brand to create a, a, you know, a, a trusted and, and authoritative uh, part of the internet, a, a lighthouse, if you will, so that they can say if it doesn't end in .bmw or it doesn't end in .nike, then it's not us. Right. And that's really powerful, um, particularly if you're a financial institution like a, a bank um, and saying that uh, dot chase or, or dot ANZ in, in Australia, um, you know, that, that's really powerful to say that this is our home on the internet and don't go anywhere else. But, you know, you know, Adrian, there's still a lot of complaints coming through, like uh, the multinationals, General Electric, Coca-Cola, more than 50, among the 50 U.S. companies who have actually signed this petition saying that these changes actually increase their, their costs and also increases the chances of fraud. Yeah, look, I think that's the natural reaction straight away is, is to think that without seeing and, and being explained the true opportunities, uh, and there are many benefits to, um, to the program, but uh, the proliferation of a number of new generic top-level domain names you know, um, that, that they would have to uh, register under, of course, that's going to cause a natural reaction. However, ICANN have built in a number of different mechanisms um, that are very different to the existing um, under, under .com, the existing mechanisms. So they can be rest assured that they can rely on those. There's a trademark clearinghouse. Um, there's a number of different takedown measures that are being introduced mm -hmm. that are brand new to ensure that they have support. And they've had a lot of input to that along the way. The IP lobby has okay. been quite strong in pushing ICANN to make sure that this is uh, you know, an opportunity for them. Now, among the applications submitted, the strongest interest seems to have come from uh, businesses here in the Asia Pacific, making up over 52% so far of the total. Uh, what's going on with the regionality? Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's probably our figures that we're seeing so far. And, and uh, when we're out servicing our global customers that are participating, that's where we're seeing. I think that that's natural, given that um, our, our base is in Australia. So um, the unfortunate part is I think North America's certainly got a, a good lead on this. Um, ICANN is a North American company. You've got the inception of the Internet from there. I think the take-up is very strong in North America. What I'd certainly like to see is uh, more Asian companies um, you know, listening to this opportunity and, and having a good look at the benefits. Because, so, as I say, there are many of them. And and um, with the, you know, the introduction of internationalized domain names, as um, was previously spoken about, you know, this is a real mm -hmm. landmark uh, opportunity. For the very first time, uh, folks will be able to navigate the Internet end-to-end -end in their local script, whether that be Chinese, whether that be Arabic, uh, and so on and so forth. So yeah, this okay. is really, really powerful and a great opportunity for um, brands and for entrepreneurs alike. Adrian, one more quick question for you. What's the most popular uh, submission so far? Is there a trend that you're seeing among the names requested? Yeah, it's, it's a tough one to answer because um, some of the best ideas that I've seen you know, come w uh, with confident, uh, confidentiality agreements. But look, there's some really good ones. Um, one motor car company thought of uh, every time you registered a domain, uh, every time you bought a car, you would be given your own domain name. And with that domain name, normally you would be in charge of your own content. What they're looking at doing is providing all the warranty information, all the manuals and booklets, all the services and everything else down that, um, down that pipeline to you. So your domain name becomes more a utility. And I thought that was pretty nifty that they were looking at doing that. So we're seeing a lot of innovation, a lot of business models coming through on the back of this mm -hmm. new generic top-level domain name program. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Adrian, good talking to you this morning. Adrian Kinderis uh, joining us uh, from New York.